Now I'm very happy to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Karen Pietz, who will give us a special presentation on how to support a strong, healthy immune system. Dr. Pietz is a highly qualified medical doctor and Ayurvedic physician. She qualified as a licensed medical physician in 1983 and gained a PhD in psychology in the following year. In 1985, she opened and became the doctor in charge of the first German Mahashi Ayurved Health Center in Schlederhausen near Osnabrück. Now she is the medical director of the Mahashi Ayurved Private Hospital in Bad Ems, Germany, which she founded in 1993. This is the largest Ayurvedic hospital worldwide outside India. Dr. Pierce has studied with many learned Vajas, including Dr. Raju, Dr. Balraj, Dr. Kasture, and many others. She has treated over 30,000 patients with Mahashi Ayurved, and she has received many prestigious awards, including in 2006, the Indian Global Ajmal Khan Award for Best Ayurvedic Physician. The first time the award went to Europe, and the first time a female doctor received it. As well as being a mother of four, she has found the time to author six books and co-author another three, and write a number of articles in leading medical journals. In addition, Dr. Pietz is a qualified teacher of Transcendental Meditation and has been since 1977. So now I'd like to ask her to give her special presentation on how to support a strong, healthy immune system for natural protection against bacteria and viruses. So over to you, Dr. Pietz. So a warm welcome to everybody. I'm very happy. So many people are there from so many different countries. It really warmed my heart. So, and I'm also happy to help you to put this into action, live in a way that you are strong and so healthy with all the tricks and hints of Ayurveda that your health will be so strong. So now we start here. We want to support a strong immune system. So our own immunity is able, what it is able since millions of years to protect us against viruses and bacteria because we just have to think about that since all these times, our body has its own mechanism to, find, to fight against it. And Ayurveda not only is the way to get the hindrances away to become enlightened, but it's also helpful on a very um, bodily, physical uh, area to help you to, to, to have a good strength. And we see when you look at it now, we see there are many different things we can do and we want to talk about today. So the first thing, of course, which you're all waiting for are the herbal compounds of Marishi Ayurveda, which help us to combat viruses and bacteria in a natural way. Then of course, diet is very important. Your behavior is important. And most important, of course, as usual, the consciousness, the basis of all our life. So just very quickly, what is a virus and what is a bacteria? People normally don't know so much. So a virus is super, super, super small. It's only visible under an electronic microscope. And when you have a bacteria, you can see it with a normal light microscope. It's up to 100 times larger than a virus. So viruses, as you saw many, many pictures the last year, I guess, they're always spherical. Various bacteria can have different, many, many, many different forms. And the viruses, it's not an organism by itself. They only have their own genetic material. It's enclosed in a shell of proteins, which is called a capsid. Whereas the bacteria, they have locomotion or pili, and they can um, glue themselves to other bacteria or to also to our cell walls. And the virus, it is a little bit tricky. What the virus does, it takes their genetic material and put it into a host cell, so into our body cell. 
And there the, the DNA of the virus reprograms the host. So our own body cells, our own genetic material, and then it produces many more viruses and later on pushes it out of the cells. So this is a little bit mean, I have to say, but that's how they do it. Whereas the bacteria, they have a, a specific cell wall, they have a cytoplasm, they have all kinds of, they are a real cell and they have to replicate themselves by cell division. So just for information for the beginning, so we know what we are talking about actually. So now we just come very quickly to the Ayurvedic way to look at things. So most of you will have heard the term ama. Ama means in Ayurveda, all kinds of residues in the body, which are not supposed to be there, but they are normally there. So the literal translation of ama, it's undigested. So it means you eat something and you don't digest it well, and then it gets stored somewhere in your uh, binding tissue. Oh. Then the modern translation I always like because everybody understands it's toxins, that the toxins from the air, from our food, aroma stuff, some artificial flavoring, all these things we can ingest in our modern food if we are not cautious enough. And then of course the mental armor, if somebody has a lot of anxieties and worries, then you also produce something which is physical in your body. So if you go to the old texts, what they say, the old classical texts say the major causative factors of most diseases is eating before the previous meal is digested. So that's very easy to follow. It's a very general rule. And it says, watch your hunger and saturation level. So when you're not completely hungry, don't eat. When you start to feel saturated, stop eating. And then next time you want to eat, watch the same thing again, hunger and saturation level. So this in between, have a snack here and there, please stop it because it will help you to produce more ama. And um, as I always say, our bacteria and viruses, they love the ama in the body and they multiply when, they, when there's a lot of ama in the body. So if you overeat, that means you are saturated and you still eat, or you're not hungry and you eat, then the digestive fluids, they can not flow around the food particles from all sides. And that means the food does not get digested, but it gets fermented. And that means gas is produced, it's pretty, oh, read it yourself, difficult word for me, <laughs> putrefaction. <laughs> Okay, then, and then that means ama is produced and there will be deposits at the intestinal walls and also imbalance of the intestinal flora. You all will have heard it's so important to have the right intestinal flora, but Ayurveda knows there's one layer below the derangement of the intestinal flora and that is if you have ama in your digestive tract. So the armor has to go out and then the intestinal flora normalizes. So this is something very easy, super cheap. Everybody can do it. Drink hot water regularly. Let it simmer for 10 to 20 minutes. And um, then what this hot water does, it activates the digestive power, Agni. It activates your cell metabolism so the body can clean itself. It eliminates water soluble harmful substances, the armor we talked about, from the organism. And by this boosts the immune system. You have a good immune system if you have only little amount of armor. No armor is not possible, but very little amount. That is what we want to strive for. So also the hot water, it reduces the vata and it comes and when the vata is reduced, the natural effect is it relieves the appetite for sweets. So what you can do to make it practical, you can um, get up in the morning and before you go into the bathroom, you just put your hot water pot on your stove and then you let it simmer where you are, do your personal hygiene in the morning, 
And when you come back, you put it back into a thermos and have it with you the whole day and drink it regular every half an hour or every three quarters of an hour. And the amount is not so important. Important is it should be hot. I mean, don't burn your tongue, but it should be really, really warm because everything which is warm, it activates your metabolism so it can purify more. And then you drink it regularly. Don't drink it half an hour nearer than half an hour before the meal and not an hour or an hour a half after a big meal. So the digestive fluids are not diluted by the water. So there are some easy tricks where you can remove the armor. And we want to remove the armor because we want to protect us against virus and bacteria, and especially in these days. Drink hot water regular in between meals. And then after you overeat, I mean, we have to be clear this happens sometimes. Food is something which is nice for us. So if you overeat, you just skip the next meal. So the body has time to digest. And then when the real hunger level, clear hunger level comes again, then you can eat again. Another thing which is quite strong and very, very helpful is have one liquid day per week. So in the old text, you find it's just a very short paragraph. It says this is very good for your health. And somebody who follows this all his life, he will live. Um, I think the world, the, the word saying it, he, he lives many years longer with a perfect health. So this is always worth it. So what you do, you see it here in the picture, you can drink or eat everything which is completely fluid. So that means you can have vegetable juices, fruit juices, green juices. You can have vegetable soups, grain soups or mixed. And it should be soupy. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't have a porridge consistency. It should be really soupy. And when you're hungry again, Okay, then you take another juice. So it shouldn't be a stressful day. It should be nice and you should feel light. And the reward comes next morning when you have a very deep and wonderful meditation and a very enthusiastic mood and you're happy. <laughs> you want to work. Everything is nice and light because taking the residues out of your body also scratches the residues from your soul and you feel much more happy. And actually there are, I cannot tell everything now, but there are new studies which are super fascinating, especially from American doctors who are doing tests, very specific tests about the health promoting results if people fast. It's, it's really encouraging. It goes up to building new cells and it's just incredible. And if you have this in a soft way once a week, that will be a perfect thing for your health and uh, to give you a little encouragement i'm doing this since i think 40 years <laughs> quite regularly i skip maybe two or three times per year otherwise and it's it's nice to do it you get used to it and it's very good reducing your aging process very nice okay and then you can have a cleansing for 10 day armor reduction this is a, a treatment which we have from Dr. Raju. So what you do is you just have a nice vegetarian light meal at lunch. And in the evening, you only have soup. And in the morning, you just have a juice. And then in between, you have your hot water. And what Dr. Raju told us, if you do this for 10 days, it is as strongly purifying as seven days of complete fast but it doesn't weaken your system. That's why in this way it's better. So meaning better juice in the morning, light vegetarian lunch at, no, meal at lunch, <laughs> and a soup in the evening, a light soup in the evening. So this is if you want to reduce your armor, and that's a perfect time now because we have the kapha time and the body anyway, when the weather becomes a little bit more warm outside, it starts to melt the toxins in the system and excrete the toxin in the system. That's why all religions 
have their fasting periods in this time of the year. It's really an old knowledge in all the um, in all the countries. Okay, many of you will have heard of Amri Kalash. We make that very short. This is a wonderful combination of two compounds. One is a paste. Oh, this is still German. Huh? Let's see. And the other is tablet, MA4 paste and MA5 tablets. And they have a strong effect on free radicals, which is 500 times more strong. No, 100 to 1000 times more strong than 500 other tested substances. It's the strongest somebody ever found. And free radicals always be, uh, play a role if you have an infection or if you have any kind of disease. It has an antidepressant effect and many improved health things. And please watch the blue ones. There is a resistance against infectious diseases. So they help you that you don't get sick and also allergic rhinitis since the COVID is something which is um, affecting your respiratory tract. Okay, and then there's a significant reduction of side effects in chemotherapy and radiation. I've seen this in many, many patients. And in case you want to ask me about the vaccination, you want to decide yourself, you want to go for the vaccination, at least two weeks before and after take the Amrit Kalash so then you will be protected of the side effects of the side effects most probably. So this is against cancer but what they also found is improved immune response so the lymphocytes if you have that are the cells which are combating virus and bacteria, they multiply if you take the Amrit Kalash so it's a perfect protection and you will have more energy, you will have more happiness and some other improvements with other health or, or mood issues. Here we have again the allergic symptoms. Okay. So now, if you get a flu, and this is also the same, whatever virus is getting on you, if it will be for the COVID or something else. So this is not only for the COVID times, it's for all the years to come, because as I said in the beginning, we have to live with virus, there's no way out. So we want to live well with the virus. So the first thing what you should do is a strong kapha reducing diet. Kapha is one of the doshas which is inside the body creating heaviness, it's creating stamina, and it's the time of the year now when the toxins get excreted, as, as I said. If you want to get reduce the, the kapha reduction, then you have special, it's a strict diet, quite a strict diet. Normally it's enough if you do it for two days. I say this before I tell you how strict it is. <laughs> so what you should omit, is all kinds of sweets. That doesn't mean only chocolate and candies. It means every kind of extra sugar in your food. But you can have a, a water with lemon and honey because the honey has another, uh, how do you say it? Combination of sugars and of other stuff, which is a little bit kapha reducing. So everything which is hard to digest, you should not take. That means all kinds of fried foods, all animal proteins, meat, fish, all dairy, even milk, all fats, vinegar, pickles. So the big question is, what can I eat? <laughs> it's not much. So you can eat grain cooked in water, you can eat vegetable cooked in water, you can eat fresh fruits, and um, you can have drinks that should come here. No. So you can have hot water drink like this. So it's quite a hard diet. But we have seen it in many cases with a normal flu or with a with a common cold, you will see that it goes over in no time. And that gives me the seeing that in many, many patients and also myself and my family members, seeing that it gives you the, 
uh, it gives you the faith that you just see it, it's really working in no time and just for two days just follow this it's a little bit hard but after that the disease is gone and that's nice <laughs> so now comes the next step in case you get a fever this is very important in case you get a fever it's even more strict then you only eat rice soup only rice soup nothing else meaning you have basmati rice you cook it with water one part of basmati rice to 16 parts so it's very liquid liquid until it gets creamy that that may take like 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes and then you can season it with especially with some nice spicy things and only have ginger tea or hot water so the ginger tea as such it's reducing the fever rice is cooling it's also reducing the fever and you have to understand if you have a disease your body is your friend so what is the body doing the body starts immediately to to help you to get rid of the invaders and that's why it puts up the fever so now if you have a fever all the blood goes into the muscles into the tissues because there are all the invaders and they need to be attacked so where is the blood not in these days it's not in your stomach it's not in your digestive system if i mean not of course there's blood but <laughs> the main amount it goes to the outer areas of the body the other amount the, is not in the inside so that means your digestive system just during these days it's very weak it cannot digest well so now if you have a disease and you have a heavy food it cannot be digested well if food is not digested well what happens you produce ama if you have ama in your system what happens bacteria and virus have a feast they have something to eat and your disease is worse if you follow this this is quite surprising. I once had it in my life. I had about 39 degrees 0.5 fever and I only had the rice soup the first time I did this. And it was completely clear in my brain. I was happy. I had clear meditations. I did not feel sick, but I was burning, red and burning. So then I understood if you eat something which is heavy, that gives you the feeling I am sick. The food is giving the feeling I am sick, not the disease if you know how to manage. So never forget that. Try it with yourself. Try it with other people who have any kind of fever and you will be surprised what you see. So you only need to do this for two, three days because it's so strong. It's super helpful in no time. So after two to three days of um, the fever regimen with the rice soup and the ginger tea tea you can go back to <laughs> to number one where i said omit what can you take the vegetables cooked in water cereals vegetable soups spices fresh juices fruit or vegetables and everything should be slightly warm to improve your agni your digestive system so this year is not against covid it's against all kinds of viruses and bacteria, which give you an inflammation. And especially with the fever, also you have the trick with the rice soup. I don't hope you get sick. I hope you get sick once and then you try it and you'll never forget it because it's really impressive if you do it. Okay, then we have hot water every 30 minutes. It must not, it's just half a cup will be enough or kapha tea, which is a spicy tea, which helps to digest, or the ginger tea. And ginger, I didn't put in the presentation because we don't have so much time, but ginger has um, many, many studies showing it is increasing the immune system, it's decreasing inflammation, it's decreasing um, bacterial and viral, um, no, it's decreasing uh, the activity of virus, of bacteria, even of fungus. So it's a real medicine. Good. Now you want to know what to order, I guess. So you have it at home. You should have it at home and you see why. 
you have to start immediately at the first signs if you feel mm, I maybe get a disease because the time required to double a bacteria is only about 17 minutes. That means if you wait for 34 minutes, you have twice as much. If you wait more than an hour, you have four times as much and then it goes up, 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 up. And that's why I always say, if you want to protect yourself, just have one dose of each preparation at home. So in case you feel, oh, oh I think I got something, start right away. So there is one preparation, it's the MA687. And it has a nice taste, by the way, and you take it half an hour before the meal. That means, we always say half an hour before the meal, that means basically your stomach should be empty as much as possible. So the body reacts to the, to the ingredients of these tablets. There's another one, the MA7088. So because I give you all the, all the possibilities because sometimes one compound is not there or then you have an, another option to, to select. The MA7088 is four times one tablet. You take it the same, same amount. And by the way, it's a good preparation also if somebody has problems with hay fever, but only you have to, to start with hay fever three months before the hay fever season. So it might be already a little late. But if you take it in that high dose, four times one tablet, then you will see a difference also. So this is if you have a cough, the prana syrup, you see the little bottle there, it's very tasty. <laughs> and uh, that's also very helpful to protect your, your bronchals. So um, when the symptoms subside, that can be in two, three days, especially when you have in combination with the diet, then it will be even quicker. Then you can take the reduced doses for a few days or also for prevention, you just take two times one tablet. So this was the common cold. And now the viral flu has a little difference, but some are the same, so that's easy. And now we have the same thing also here. Start at the first signs. The molecule of a viral DNA is, um, can double in 40 minutes. It's a little slower, but it's too quick if you have to order your preparation. <laughs> and it comes there in two days, it's too late. So start immediately. So now we have the MA1404, that's specially good for flu. And same time you take the double dose, four times one tablet, half an hour before the meal. The 7088, it's also good for common cold and for the flu, so that's a good option if you want both. And then we have the Trifala Plus, Many people of you will know MA505. And if there's a severe disease, please have this at home. And you take one tablet every hour or every two hour. So because it reduces the armor very strongly and the body can, can improve the situation also very quickly. And then the same thing. If you want prevention, you just take two times one tablets of this or when the symptoms go away, then you reduce the dose to the normal dose two times one. Okay, so this is a nice study I found. I have to apologize. I do not have it for transcendental meditation, but it still shows us the way. We all know that from all the studies, we know that transcendental meditation has a much more deeper and broader effect than just other kinds of meditations. And here, um, the researchers made three groups. And eight weeks, people did mindfulness. And um, they could see that the people who just did the mindfulness, which is not as strong as TM as we all know, had missed 76% fewer days from works between September and May. So it was done in the winter season. And this is all the TM teachers of you, you will notice if you initiate people into TM and you see them one year later, then they come and say, this was a funny year, I didn't have a cold. 
and they didn't even <laughs> think it comes from meditation, but we do know it comes. Okay, then the other group, they did three, eight weeks of strenuous walking or jogging, and they had 48 fewer days, 48% fewer days absent than the control group. So what we see here, mind over matter, that means that you have, um, that meditating or be quiet in yourself is even more helpful than have F walking and, and jogging, jogging anyway is too strong. Okay. So then also the severity of the colds and flu different meaning that it's quicker gone and it's not so severe when you do the walking or the, or the meditation. So the meditators and the athletes, they had five days and the control groups, they had eight days, eight days when, they were, when they were sick. So um, we have the laboratory test, they also did it. And this is very interesting now for the COVID times and for the question of the vaccination. Because you know that the vaccination is basically, it's a very intelligent idea. I think it's a ge genius idea to put the virus or the, the virus inside the body in a weakened form so the body starts to produce antigens antibodies and but what they found in this laboratory tests that the meditators and also the people who did the regular walking they had more antibodies in the body so that means your natural capacity to produce antibodies is enhanced by these natural means of walking, of meditating, and I would even say eating in a proper way, don't overeat, all these things. So it's like a good vaccination if you follow it every day. Okay. So then there's a new study, also very easy, very cheap, everybody can do it. And they found that viruses do not like humidity. And um, the research was that there was an influenza virus prepared aerosol particles. And they were pushed out by dummies like a calf. And then they were measured in different time intervals, how much they are in the air. And they had a different humidity in the room between 20 to 45%. And I don't know about your countries, but when I was a small child long ago, everybody in our country, we had the heatings in the, the heaters in the room. And we always had a, a bowl with water or even some, excuse me, I don't know the word, some, some vessel you could hang on the heater where water was inside to humidify the rooms, which was very intelligent as we see now. I don't think these days you can still buy it, but you can always have a, a, a bowl with water on your heater. So to make sure that the humidity in your room is high enough because see the findings. One hour after the cough, the infectivity that means the amount of the viruses in the air. In dry air, the infectivity was 71 to 73. In more humid air, it was 46 to 22. It means five times less infectiosity, excuse me, if you are, um, if you have more humidity in your rooms. And um, I read that the Chinese government is um, recommending to their people officially to do regular the steam baths like this one, like once a day, because that is helping. Because if your nasal pathways are more humid, the virus cannot multiply so much. It's very easy, very cheap. So everybody can follow that. And the good, the good um, news is the viruses were mostly strongly detected or reduced in the first quarter of an hour after the coughing by over 90%. So if you feel you might have got something, quickly go home and do what this little boy does. So you just inhale it very hot and then 
the viruses are in, uh, inactivated. A new study where people were tested who did transcendental meditation and the researchers looked what do their immune cells do in the body. And also that is really, really encouraging. So we all know the amount of excreted stress hormones are reduced. It's like serum lactate, vanillin, mandelic acid, you don't need to keep it, but plasma cortisol. So that means if you have um, reduced stress hormones, immediately the immune system is higher than if you are stressed. So, and the higher plasma melatonin, it helps you um, to improve your defense. And that means defense with cells and defense with hormones. And it also stimulates the formation of natural killer cells. So we have cells who can kill bacteria and viruses wonderfully, but we need a lot of them. And that means if you do transcendental meditation, you will have more of them. So you are protected in a way you never knew before. You just feel the mantras fading and you feel relaxed, but your body is starting to actively produce more killer cells. So then again, here you have um, hormones and biotransmitters. And this is the interesting thing. After four months of regular meditation, the number of CD8 lymphocytes was increased. And that means you are protected against viruses, against fungi, and also against certain bacteria. So meaning you do your regular meditation, it brings you to perfect health. <laughs> okay, we know this in many studies, but with our theme today, looking what the viruses in the body can do and how to protect, we know that the regular meditation is a very, very good means to help you. And also, I mean, it helps you to have less anxieties, to go through all this challenging time with less anxieties, again means your immune system goes up because you're relaxed. So now we have interesting scientific studies in connection with COVID-19, four of them. And in 2003, scientists at the University of Frankfurt they found that something in the licorice, it's glycerine, protects us against SARS viruses. It was a SARS coronavirus, not this 19 we have now, but it helped. And then there's another protective measure, measurement or means with the glycerine. It can also block the entry ports for the coronavirus. That means if you take licorice root, which is in vata tea and in many of the, um, basically all of the compounds I just told you, then you are protected that it goes into your system. And when it's there, it's inside, it cannot replicate, it cannot double or thrice or like that before. So licorice, very healthy, very easy to take. Then ashwagandha is also a very famous traditional Ayurvedic medicinal plants. And it also inhibits the key enzyme, which is responsible for the multiplication of virus. So, and it also strengthening, it's also a good immune booster. And then we have the ginger root, and that already I told you, it's against virus, bacteria, and it strengthens the immune system. And it's also pain reducing and has many, many other good side effects positive side effects. So, and all the medical plants which are investigated in these four studies are components of the MA687. And many of them are also in the others. So now we go to the modern way. So we know from many studies from modern medicine, which is good, vitamin C, have a good amount of vitamin D, especially the people here from Northern Europe where the sun is so far away in the winter time, we need a lot of that. Then we have zinc. And of course, also this is um, confirmed research, 
light is good, air is good, meaning the um, oxygen in the air, it is killing bacteria and viruses. Sun is good, exercise and sport is good. If you do not overdo, actually there are studies if you do moderate sport, the immune system goes up, you have more leukocytes, the white blood cells, which are combating disease next day in your blood. If you overdo, if you overstrain, then you have less. So like Ayurveda says, do moderate sport, but do it regularly. So to summarize, rest and relaxation is important. Also go to bed early, the, the things you all know, very important, early to bed. Daytime sleep, not more than 30 minutes per day during, during the day, maybe after lunch, for if people feel weak or if they are old or something like this. Then avoid overexertion, no sports, yoga, abhyanga, if you are sick, that's important. Otherwise, of course, have your sports and your yoga and your abhyanga, your Ayurvedic oil massage. No snacks between meals from tomorrow on, from this afternoon on, every day. It's a general rule. But that means you, should, you can have a snack if you're really hungry. You know, we have different ways of metabolism in the system. We have people who have a lot of water with the irregular um, hunger and saturation level. We have people with a lot of pitta, normally with a very strong metabolism. They can have maybe four meals per day because they are hungry. Whereas the people with kapha, a lot of kapha, they are more heavy. They have a slow metabolism. Sometimes they feel much better if they only have two meals per day. So we come back to our one of our first points. Just see that the saturation uh, level, you don't eat, you stop when your saturation level is there and you never eat when you're not clearly hungry. Then there's something which is a good protection. It's also helpful for keeping a good memory when you get older. It's the MP16 or the nasal reflex oil. You can use this, you can buy this in the, in the Ayurvedic shops, Marishi Ayurveda shops. And it's um, because it's a sesame oil based herbal oil. It's really dark brown from all the wonderful herbs which are in there. And if you put it in your nose, one time, two times, three times, especially when you go out before you have contact to other people, um, it builds a little protection layer on top of your mucous membrane. So the virus gets already destabilized when it touches the oil. And that could be also helpful to protect yourself. And then there is the pranayama because it helps you to get a clear oxygen into your, into your system. And since I'm really in time, I tell you a short story um, where I found it myself when I was young, I had a tendency to have many, many colds. And I had the pranayama already doing this before meditation. And I was very poor, so no car, no, no money for going by train somewhere. So I had an intense common cold, nose was running, and I had to walk like for two hours to visit a friend in the middle of the the um, town and just by intuition I don't know I did for two hours I just did the pranayama and when I reached the, the friend the cold was gone and it never came back so never underestimate oxygen it's a strong bacterial and virostatic killer so in this sense I wish all of you health and happiness and a strong way in the direction of enlightenment. We've got time for a two or three questions. Should okay, we ask great. Okay. Um, one question is, does hot water, you talked a lot about hot water, can people drink tea as well or does it have to be pure hot water? Yes. So, of course, you can drink tea as well. You can also have one cup of, of coffee per day. I don't mind. The thing with the hot water is 
there's nothing in it, you know. It's just water. Okay, some some little parts, but no taste, no molecules with some herbs in it. And that's why it takes out the toxins even more as if you drink a tea. If you want a tea, the tea has a medicinal value, which is also good. But then you have like a tea just per day and drink the same tea, let's say for four weeks, then it has a medicinal reason, medicinal value. But after the four weeks, the body is used to the tea. So then take another, another one. You can come back after another four weeks to the first one if you like. But for purifying, actually the hot water is the best. Okay, should vegetable juices be drunk warm? It depends. <laughs> I always make a joke. Do you know how to find out if you have a good or a bad Ayurveda doctor in front of you? The good one will never say yes or no. <laughs> because it always depends on your digestive power. So that means if somebody has pitta, he is very warm, he is hot, and he has the feeling, I want to drink something cool. Okay, then have it, but never have it lower than room temperature. If somebody has a lot of kapha with the slow metabolism or more vata with this irregular digestive system, for them, it's always good if it's hot. Hot means it can be warm, but never cold. And for all people, for all the three doshas, never take something directly from the fridge because it will cool down your digestive system and it will weaken on the long run your immune system. Thank you. Another question. What is your recommendation for people in respect to AMA, people who are underweight? Is there any special recommendation for them? Yes, that's a very good question. Also, people who are underweight will have AMA. So, um, if the person has, together with that, with the lot of vata, underweight, sleeping problems and everything, we would need to, to um, talk about it, let's say, privately or something like this. For a general rule, if you are underweight, you also need a lot of food because you burn it a lot. So that means if you want to have um, a fasting period and you are not weak, that's very important. Let me say two things before. We need a pure system. We want to reduce the, the AMA. That's number one. Number two, we need that our body cells are filled with good and strong molecules. So we need what we need. So we don't want to fast until we are wasting and you run into another problem. So let's say this Vata person asking the question feels strong and is just underweight. So then you can do everything, everything what I said. If you feel weak, you should gradually start and watch. You don't do a full liquid day. You just start and have a water, uh, a soup in the evening. And that you do once a week, let's say for four weeks. Then you see how you feel next day. If you feel fine, the next step would be you take the soup in the evening, you have a juice next morning and still have your lunch. And already you had sort of a fasting like 24 hours. And if that's also fine for four weeks, then you can go on and have your, your full liquid day. I'm quite skinny. I do my full liquid day. I really easily reduce like 300 grams, 400 grams on that day. But next day, next day over it, it's again on it again. So don't be too afraid. Just watch your body and see how you feel. 